Hello, hello. I have arrived. Yes. Future man, researcher, artist, and alleged medical doctor. <laughs> Ty. <laughs> uh, you can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Hello. Hello. But yes. Tonight, we will be playing some Ark Knights. But yeah. Definitely, definitely a game that I've been wanting to play for a long time. A game that I've been wanting to play for a long time. But, uh, I don't know. Just never, never did get around to it. Never did quite feel like, I don't know. I don't know what I was waiting for, I guess. But I felt like, I felt like, Never quite felt right before, for whatever reason. But yes, so anyway. So yeah, so tonight, we're going to be playing Ark Knights. As is the tradition, when I start a new game, I will sort of spend some time talking about it, my experiences with it, my history with it, insofar as I have one. But, uh, yeah. First, though, I've got to remember, business. So. Today, Ark Knights, like I said, depending on circumstances, the stream might end up a little bit short because I do need to uh, handle some chores around the house that I've been putting off for an extended period of time. <laughs> but yes, so stream might end up a little bit shorter than usual, a little bit shorter than, than usual. I'm repeating myself a lot today. But yes, also, in case you're wondering, I will not explain the movie. I will not explain the movie, except for, I will not elaborate on it, except insofar as to say that I will not elaborate on it, basically. But yes, anyway. <laughs> the movie, the movie is fun. It's one of my favorite pieces of Ark Knight's official art. Even more so than most of the art in the game, to be honest. I guess that was an elaboration upon the movie. I will elaborate no further upon the movie, except insofar as to say that I will elaborate no further on the movie. But yes, anyway, let's see, where was I? So yeah, I have a relatively long history with Ark Knights. I have been what I would consider a very dedicated, casual player of the game. I've played it most days, most days since it was released. And I've also been thinking about playing it on stream for a long time. And by and large, by and large, my usual MO when playing games on stream is to play through do eh. Yeah, to make any given playthrough of a, of a game that I do on stream my first playthrough of the game. Originally, that was something that I did intentionally, specifically, something that I specifically aimed for. I went out of my way to only play new games on stream for the most part, or at least for the, for my main games, the ones that I would play multiple times a week. But um, yeah, I've since, uh, since abandoned that as a strategy because it's, I don't know, there's a lot of games out there that I would like to play on stream. But, most of the time that I have been an Ark Knights player has been during that time and again sort of under the under the idea that I would want to save the story mode you know the story for when I'm streaming it and so for a good I guess yeah I've been streaming for about two years now yes just just shy of two years it will be It'll be two years this month, actually, I just realized. <laughs> yeah, my second anniversary is coming up, and I completely forgot. Wow. Anyway. So. Where was I? Okay, so. So I'd been holding off on playing through the story mode of Ark Knights, and because I didn't want to be... I didn't want to get, like, have too many good units basically to you know invalidate the challenge of the the story and all that i also avoided you know leveling up most of my units beyond a certain point and so i've not been able to do most of the sort of you know in-depth more difficult content in the game i haven't been able to progress very far in most of the events so 
you know, I say that I've been playing this game more or less continuously since release, but for the most part, I've been just sort of doing the daily resource grinding. And not terribly efficiently at that. But yes, so I've been playing Arknights for a long time, but I haven't been playing it all that much. Yeah, instead, I've, you know, again, I've avoided spoilers to a certain extent due to wanting to preserve that for the sake of this playthrough. It's funny, I've now... I did, you know, I did, like I said, give up on the idea of only only doing games that I've never played before on stream. But I still didn't end up playing through much of Arknights after I did that, despite the fact that, you know, the removal of that policy freed me up to do so. But we're going to start changing that today. But yes. So, Arknights. I guess, hold on, did I... I completely went past the schedule. My bad. So, tonight... Arknights. Tomorrow, Tales of Arise. Thursday, uh, I've just been made aware that Sheps will not be available for the collab, the usual collab on Thursday. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do just yet, but I will figure something out, I'm sure. But yes. So, Thursday, Thursday, no, uh... I guess, actually, after I'm done with the stream here, I should probably talk to Sheps, see if we can go about scheduling to a different day. All I said is that they uh, won't be available Thursday. So yeah, anyway, the schedule is subject to change, of course. Perhaps that goes without saying to a certain extent, but yes. So, Thursday, definitely not. Whatever it is, it definitely won't be uh, VA11 Hall A Cyberpunk Bartender Action with Sheppy Sheps. That may happen at a di on a different day this week. That might not happen this week. Who knows? But yes, and then Friday, assuming nothing else gets shuffled around, Friday should be some more Tales of Arise. All streams are at e R -E. All streams are scheduled for 8:30 p.m. Central Time. Sometimes I hit that mark. Sometimes I don't. Today was probably the closest I've been to hitting that mark in a good while. But um, yes, so. Let's see. Now that we've gotten over the schedule, back onto Arknights. So, like I said, I started playing Arknights around release. It wasn't immediately on release, but it was around the time of the release. And I actually, I actually became aware of Arknights a little bit before the release. Some, I don't know, I think probably even before the Chinese release, if I remember correctly. Because yeah, the game is originally Chinese. Yeah, I, I became aware of the game at one point, and I, I just thought that the character designs, the aesthetics of it all, were very cool. <laughs> they were very cool. Uh, specifically, maybe I should have prepared this ahead of time, but, uh... Da -da -da. But yes, so specifically, what drew me in was, uh... Again, the character designs, in particular, the character design for a particular character, whom I will show here in a second. But yes. And uh, I found I found the character designs to be very, very nice and cool and stylish. I found the, the concept of it as a tower defense to be nice. I like tower defense games. That should be... There we go. Yes, this character specifically, uh, Susiai is her name. Yeah, we probably won't be seeing a whole, whole lot of her today, if at all any of her. But I found... I saw this particular piece of artwork, and I was like, oh, this is an interesting character. But yes, we'll put Susiai away for now. She's covering up the movie, after all. But yes, anyway, so yeah, so saw character art that I thought was cool looking. I saw that the game was a was a uh, tower defense game, which I quite like, but also sort of, you know, it was a, a different sort of tower defense game. The towers in this game are, you know, your are 
people, basically. You don't put down structures, you put down units. And those units have various abilities and all that. I suppose I don't need to go into too much detail about what precisely a tower defense game is, but... But yes. So, the game, the look of the game, impressed me so much that I decided to actually pre-register for it. And then I promptly forgot about it. <laughs> I promptly forgot about it uh, until much, much later. A, re a little bit after the release, I think probably... It definitely wasn't the release day, I'm confident, but it might have been the release week. But yeah, I I launched, or I, I learned about the game again, having forgotten that I had pre-registered for it, downloaded it, started playing it, and I got like a, some, a bonus thing that you get for, that you got for pre-registering. And I was all like, when did I, when did I pre-register? But, uh, but yes, I did, I did recall after that. But yes, so, that was sort of my introduction to Ark Knights. Beyond that, again, I haven't been too plugged into the game itself, out of a desire to avoid spoilers and whatnot. So yes, so, let's see. What was I saying? Okay, yes, I haven't been too plugged into the game itself, out of a desire to avoid spoilers. And so, you know, I've been mostly engaging with it through the, through various, you know, non-canon, like, fan content and stuff. But uh, I do, you know, keep up with the game a little bit. I play, you know, a little bit of most of the events that come out and all that. There's actually an event out right now, but we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so after all this speaking, we're now going to get into sort of my, my plans for this series. So yes, so I don't necessarily intend to be playing through all of Ark Knights here. Yeah, I don't necessarily intend to be playing through all of Ark Knights right now in sort of a continuous series. I don't know precisely how long it would take to do that, but these, these Tuesday games are sort of secondary games to me. I usually don't, I usually don't play them expecting to get a long series out of them. If they go on for a particularly long time, it's usually just because, uh, usually just because I don't play them as consistently as I do other games. I don't play them for as many days of the week. But yes. So, I don't anticipate doing all of the Ark Knight story that is out at this point. Because yeah, it's still, still ongoing. More chapters are being added over time. Yes, I don't intend to... Yeah, I don't intend to do the whole story right now. I d and I definitely don't intend to do the, the current event that is going on. It's a rerun, but... Yes. So for right now, my current plan is I'm going to go to at least chapter three, get through chapter three at least. That's about sort of where my playthrough ended basically last time. I'm going to get as far as chapter three, uh, as far as through chapter three, possibly into chapter four, because I think, I think the first four chapters, including the zero, chapter zero, basically, yeah, were what was in the game on release. Not that that necessarily has any any particular bearing on this on this situation, but I figured you know that it, that seems like a pretty good starting point. Yeah, we're gonna get that far into the game at least is my plan, and then I'll probably take a break from it, do some other Tuesday game or perhaps multiple Tuesday games in between now and then, and then you know pop back on Arc Nights here and there. But yeah, and possibly, possibly, you know, do events here and there when they when they return or when they happen as well. So yes, so that is basically the plan. Yeah, I don't intend to get through all of Arc Knights. Don't intend to do necessarily any of the more in-depth content. Certainly don't intend to do, you know, I don't consider myself any sort of expert at the game. I don't, uh... I am not a master strategist, nor am I a master base builder. I couldn't give you any particular, any particular advice on any of that. You know, mostly I just want to focus on the story, experiencing the story, sharing that with you all. Yeah, you know, the usual stuff, the usual stuff that we do around here. 
But yes. So, I think that's basically that all that needs to be said. I will say, the start of the Arc Knights that we're going to have here is going to be a little bit unusual. Because currently, you know, I have my Arc Knights account. I have my Arc Knights account. And when you, you know, start up Arc Knights for the first time, you get a spec, you get a cutscene where you get a little, I don't know, I don't know if it, if I would call it a cutscene cutscene, but you know, you get dialogue, you get some dialogue and you get a little tutorial and you get some more dialogue after that, uh, that are all sort of in a, in the same format that most of the missions of the game are in. But unlike all the other missions, you can't replay that mission and you can't replay the cutscenes associated with it. At least, if there if there is a way to do that, I have not found it. So yes, so instead, I'm going to go onto the the Ar Ark Knights wiki. Basically, <laughs> I'm just going to go onto the Ark Knights wiki and read off the dialogue. And I will also, I will also, I can find it again. There we are. Yes, I will also post a link to a video. There we go. Yes, I will also post a link to a video of the cutscene in case you want to see it in motion with the audio attached. I'll also put that in the description for the VOD. At least, yeah. Sit. I guess I won't need to do that for the Twitch VOD. I'll just need to do that for the YouTube VOD. But, um... Where was I? Oh, yes. So, again, the cutscene... If, is there if you want to watch it in video form. Yeah, nothing particularly... Yeah, I don't know. I didn't choose this particular video for any particular reason. This is just the first one that came up, up when I searched for this. But yes. Let's see. I think that should be basically everything we said. So I went over my... Back, my history with the game. I went over my plans for the game. And I went over the notice for sort of the very immediate beginning of this. Um, so yeah, I guess also to say, you know, I don't necessarily need to do the tutorials for most of the early game, I don't think, um, but I'm going to do them anyway, because there's a little bit of character, you know, character dialogue, character interaction, just general character characterization in them, because they are presented as characters speaking to other characters. And, you know, that is what I am here for. I am here for a story. I'm here for characters. You know, not necessarily to get through this game efficiently or anything like that or in any particular haste. But yes. So, I think that's basically everything that will need to be said here. Yeah, I guess while I'm on the topic of saying that I will go through tutorials, there is also, again, like I said, a sort of tutorial battle. A tutorial battle as part of the the introduction but I'm not going to try and read through all of that I looked briefly over it there's not a whole lot of like lore or anything in it or really much characterization it's pretty much just gameplay and I figured describing verbally <laughs> describing verbally the contents of a tutorial battle that isn't happening I felt like that was a that felt a little bit silly. I felt like that seemed a little bit silly. So instead, we won't be doing that. But yes. Hmm. I do wish I had planned this a little bit better and had some actually, I guess I could still Yeah, I can open up the Yeah, I can just capture a browser so I can look at the uh look at the wiki directly here. Because yes, there are, you know, images here. There are some images, and I would like I would like to have a visual aid, ideally. Alright, we're figuring things out in real time. As is the tradition here to a certain extent. All right, so I guess, yeah, no, not display capture. It would be window capture because my browser is not a game. That will do. 
two. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I definitely I definitely wish I had thought of this earlier and planned it out and all that. But, you know, things happen. <laughs> things happen. Trying to trim this down. But yes, unfortunately we will need to be we will need to cover up the movie. So I hope you will all forgive me. But yeah. Alright. There we are. Hmm. Alright, now I've got to move myself over a little bit. This is definitely not the most elegant solution. Not the most elegant or attractive solution, but it's a solution. And again, maybe I should have tested this beforehand. I did a little bit of prep work. I did a little bit of prep work, but I didn't prepare for every possibility. And I didn't prepare for everything that I would think of. This is a little bit small, I think. It's going to be hard to to read for you to read. I guess I can I can read just on my own. That should be fine. Oh, hold on. I'm on the wrong part. <laughs> uh, you know, I was trying to maintain a somewhat serious tone here because this is a somewhat serious game. But, uh, having some difficulty with that, it would seem. Well, okay. I think... Hmm. I think... Actually, what am I doing? What I can do instead is... Ba -ba -ba, take us over to the game area. Hmm, actually... Well, no, wait, hold on. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Here we are. This should be much, much better, actually. Because I actually, you know, have set this place up with appropriate spacing for there to be a display and myself also at the same time, instead of the other place where there isn't. All right, so. We will take a moment to try and... Try and, uh, get back to a somewhat serious tone. Also, I don't know... Hold on, we don't have game audio. I guess we should at this point. We don't need to have game audio at this point because the game is not there. But I'm a little bit concerned that it's not showing up. Hmm. Yeah, where is my game audio, actually? Hold on. That doesn't seem right. Is it? Ah, probably it's not there because... Probably it's not there because I don't have the actual game capture. Yeah, okay. So it's tied to the presence of the game capture. Okay. So, once again, I thank you for your patience while I figure all of this out. We're almost ready to start. In fact, let me put this in the... Oh, nope. I don't think that that didn't work very well. Uh-oh. I want to get this centered, ideally. There we go. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't like that. Alright. Can I... Well, that... No, that won't work. All right, you know what? <laughs> this is already something of a compromise, so let's just uh, let's just try to get through this and get on to the actual game itself, and not worry about getting this too too good, because it doesn't need to be. <clears throat> In the heart of Chernobog, a young girl awakens the person within the coffin, the doctor. The girl named Amya, 
tries to explain the situation to the doctor, the reunion movement suddenly attacks him at this time. Ah, it's you. It's been a long time since we've last seen each other. During this time, you've been teetering on the edge of a cliff. You may have forgotten who you are, but just remembering your name is enough. It's time. Don't linger here for too long. After all, you aren't my guest yet, nor should you even be here. She still needs you. December 23rd. You may not remember what this date means to you, and this will thrust you into peril. No, you must try to remember. EKG beeps in the background as the sound of a heart heartbeat is heard. Consciousness. Circulation resumed. Vital stabilized. Cardioplegia solution injected. EKG beeps flatly. Body temperature low. Ex administering he he hexamethasone 20 cc's now. Before beeping normally again. Got the hemostat. Get the hemostat. Condition stable. Beginning res re e resection. Careful of V-fib. Sorry for making you suffer again. Background black. An injection is heard. Yeah. I guess I don't need to read this, this stage directions, maybe. But maybe I shouldn't be drawing attention to this either. For the sake of the tone. <laughs> that I so, so desperately wanted to chase. Doctor. Hand. Take my... Take my hand. Yes, we awaken to the sight of an unfamiliar face. And an unfamiliar hand as well. Emergency. Help. It's done. Doctor? Doctor! Medic, how's Doctor doing? Just a moment we were holding, just a moment ago we were holding hands. So, why? Why is Doctor still not waking up? Amia, don't panic, just calm down first. Ah, s sorry. You always get so flustered when it comes to the doctor, but Amia, if the worst came to pass, what would you do then? I'm already mentally prepared for that. We would continue to follow the plan. I understand. Anyway, I'll do what you requested. Alright. I appreciate it. About the doctor. Don't worry, Amia. All the vital signs are stable now. I'll do one more inspection just for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hmm. Breathing is slightly shallow, but the blood pressure is normal. There should be no cause for concern. The person who is only who is known only as the doctor wakes up. <gasps> Are you awake? Amia, it's a success. The doctor's woken up. Doctor? I'm so happy, doctor. Ah, careful, you mustn't do that. Try to move yet. Your body still hasn't fully adapted to this. Doctor? Who are you? Ah, Doctor? It's me. It's me, Amia. We've come to rescue you. Who am I? You. You're a member of Rhodes Island. Just like us. As well as my partner, Dr. Tiber. You're the most important person to me. Doctor? You don't remember? I see. Uh, pleased to meet you, Amia. Um, <laughs> hello. I don't know how to put this, but so many things have changed from before. That includes me as well. However, 
You'll always be the most important person to me, Doctor. No matter what happens, this will never change. So, that's why, please, give me a little more time, however little it might be. Does the doctor really have amnesia? I'm sure everything will be fine if we give doctor some space. Where is this? A bang. Er, whoops. It's safe here. A banging sound is heard. Not that safe, apparently. Huh? What's happening? Amia, we've got a problem. Someone broke into the facility. Several people wearing black masks and armed with swords break into the, the facility. The way they're dressed, they don't look like Ursus soldiers. Sounds of combat are heard. What's the meaning of this? As the armed people, revealed to be part of Reunion, attack. They're attacking! Amia! They're heavily equipped with weapons. A crossbow shot nearly misses the medic. Ah! Be careful, everyone. Take cover and protect Doctor. Those outfits, are they from the Reunion movement? How is that possible? Guards, prepare for battle. Roger. An explosion narrowly misses the guard. <laughs> Curses. Are they after the Doctor? No. Nobody else should know about the doctor being here. Are you able to reach Calcite? I'm not sure why, but the equipment isn't working. Someone has cut off our communications. Look, have we been discovered by the Ursus government? What do we do now? Calcite won't be able to command the battle as we had originally planned. Dr. Tiber? I hope that you'll be able to take command. Isn't that a bit too early? Too risky? The doctor only just came too. I'd like to give it a try. Even without memories, the doctor has fought alongside us before. Thank you for all of your guidance. We've been through so much together. Doctor, I just know that you'll be able to do it. I know that you'll lead us to victory. I understand that asking you to do this is very sudden and inconsiderate, but please, lend us your aid. We'll be supporting you. We have no choice but to fight back, right? <sighs> I don't want to drag you into this, but right now we need your wisdom more than ever, Dr. Tiber. I hope that a part of you will reawaken during combat even though you might have doubts about yourself. But I believe in you. I know you can do this. Please take command of Rhodes Island. All right. And so, there would be the place where we would see the tutorial battle. Were there, were there such a thing here? So, you can imagine a tutorial battle happening, whatever that looks like in your mind, as we get back into the story. i take a sip real quick. Sit. <clears throat> this is the last one. <sighs> the last of the reunion forces are dispatched. Target eliminated. The entire- the enemy squad is retreating. Dr. Tiber's commands were perfect, just like Amia said. How reassuring. See, that wasn't too bad, right? Doctor, compared to everything you've been through, this is a walk in the park. <laughs> Why are you here? You're not from Ursus. We won't let you get in the way of our duties. Someone lashes the dying reunion soldier with a whip, finishing them off. Don't even think about it. Instructor... What are you spacing out for? You almost got yourself killed. Uh, I'm sorry. Quick, get back to the get back into formation. Yes, sir. Doberman, you made it. It's an emergency. My team was attacked by Reunion as well. I rushed over to join you as soon as I could. Why would Reunion attack us? An organization made up of the infected. 
I've always thought they were a bit extreme, and now they've resorted to violence. And in an Ursa city, no less? That's a death wish. The situation is only going to get more chaotic from here on out. Amya, we need to leave Chernabog right now. Okay, we've already rescued the doctor, so we can retreat according to plan. And this is Dr. Tiber? Yes. Dr. Tiber, you probably don't know who I am, but you know Amya. For your safety... No, no. Um, Doberman, Doctor isn't doing very well right now. To put it simply, Doctor has amnesia. Amnesia? What are you going to do now? We aren't planning... Weren't you planning to transfer leadership to... Doctor still has the capacity to command. At least I've confirmed that from the previous battle. I can't bring myself to trust a stranger so easily, but I trust you, Amya. I understand. Dr. Tiber, I am Doberman, captain of Operations Team E1. We're going to escort you from Chernabog, which is the Ursa city we're currently in, back to Rhodes Island. We're in an abandoned facility in Chernabog and should now head west. But since we're cut off from Dr. Calcite, Doberman and I have been have, have led our separate teams westward to a rendezvous point for confirming our signal to retreat. That is, assuming everything goes according to plan. It'd be nice if things went that smoothly, but today, today is our last opportunity to get you out of here, Dr. Tiber. But I have a bad feeling about this. Amia! What's the matter? It, it's a call from Rhodes Island. Are our communications back on? Is it Dr. Calcite? Sorry, but not quite. Amia answer, answers the call. ERTS? The emergency neural connection request system was activated. Interference has also been detected from Rhodes Island's end, and only partial neural network connection is po possible. Currently unable to establish connection with Calcite who has yet to return to Rhodes Island. Your safety is confirmed. Therefore, my mission is now complete. This piece of... Do we really have time for this? If you do not connect to Rhodes Island, communication will be severed momentarily. I am sincerely sorry for having interrupted your party. But wait, wait. Don't hang up. I need your help still. Doberman, Doctor still needs some assistance. I know, but make it quick. Doctor, PRTS is also one of our partners. We will show you what to do next. Time is of the essence, so I'm going to reconnect you to the Rhodes Island backup system. This way, we'll have an edge in battle. It's different from giving verbal commands and might be a bit hard to get used to, but once you learn to use it, the entire operation will be much smoother. Please, trust me, just how, how you used to. RTS, let's start. Identity verification required. Select verification method. Uh, Doctor, uh, please say something? Speak. I am not sure why you did not speak, but the action of touching the interface is sufficient. Fingerprint match found. Verification complete. Security clearance, 8. Welcome home, Dr. Tiber. Alright, so, now, we can go to the part of the game that has gameplay. Alright. And now that we have game audio, we don't need the background music anymore. Alright. So, I hope you're ready for some more dialogue. Like I said, that's what we're here for. How could this be? What in the world is going on here? Search all the houses. I want every single room turned inside out. Let go of me. No, you can't. Strike, resist. Too late, you filthy Chernos. Just run. Don't worry about me. Save our child. Mama. Mama. Forget about the civilians. Hold the line first. There are too many masked goons coming. Don't give the t cops any time to rest. Keep attacking. Where are reinforcements? We're going to get overrun. Attack! Attack! What's 
going on? Why is Reunion doing this? After all these years, the wolves in sheep clothing and sheep's clothing finally bear their fangs. The infected, they're attacking the Ursus troops. But why? Challenging the Ursus government like this is basically suicide. No, look at how fierce this attack is. This must have been a planned operation. The place we rescued Doctor from is supposed to be top secret, but they somehow still managed to infiltrate it. Oh, pardon. It's possible that Reunion's attack has already spread through Chanabog in its entirety. No, how can... how can that be? Shh! Have you found any of those fleeing Cherno Chernos yet? I'm still looking. Good. Don't let a single one get away. Those cold-blooded beasts. Make them pay for what they did to my family. <laughs> what was that? Over there. They, they found us. Shh. Over here. I found him. No. Uh, no. No. Hiding in an alley. Get out. Uh, uh. You really think we wouldn't find you there? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please, at least spare my child. We need to stop this. Now. Amia, I'm aware of the risk, Instructor Doberman. It's just that we don't have the luxury of sitting around waiting for the Union to disband. Additionally, nobody knows how long the situation will last. Therefore, the best course of action would be to take out the enemy and then and then get moving. Wouldn't you agree? <sighs> Understood. I'll follow your command. All squads, listen up. We have the element of surprise. These reunion members don't know we're here yet. Remember, be decisive. Take them out cleanly and swiftly. Dr. Typer, gather your team. It's time for you to prove yourself. We have no more time to second guess ourselves. A simple matter, I'll handle this. I don't wanna I don't wanna feel seem that 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 uh in charge of things. You know, we did just woke wake up, after all. I'm not that decisive when I when I first woken up. Should have told me sooner. Huh. Amia, I'm counting on you. Understood. Silent we shall be, should conflict be avoidable. But fight tooth and nail, should it be necessary. Rhodes Island Creed has always been the same. And so, we begin the battle itself. So yes, so as this is a mobile game, you will see that there is, I suppose maybe I should have kept my uh, cursor on so you can know what I'm pointing at, but in the top right here, you'll see a brain icon and some numbers next to it. That is your sanity. You spend sanity to, to uh, play on maps, basically, a few other things as well, but uh, yeah, it is, that is the sort of time limited, time gating. I don't know what the term for it is actually. I feel like I did know at one point, but I certainly don't now. Anyway, it's the thing that prevents you from just playing through the whole game in one sitting, basically. Keep you coming back and all that. But yes, so anyway, if you don't want to spend your sanity, you can always practice a mission beforehand. I suppose I should, uh, now. Maybe I should have put the squad I was going to use in the first squad slot, but oh well. But yeah, so you can always practice a, a stage. You only get so many practices per day, but you, you know, practicing does not cost sanity. So you can practice until you get a strategy that works and then spend your sanity to actually clear the stage. However, for this first stage, it's basically irrelevant.
Yes, I'll talk a little bit about my team uh, in a little bit. There's not all that much to say. But, uh, so, real quick. Up here, in the top of the top middle of the screen, you'll see on the left side, there is an enemy count. That, that displays the left number is how many enemies you defeated. The right number is how many enemies remain in the stage. And to the right of it, with the sort of tower rook symbol, that is the number of enemies who can uh, who can bypass your guard and without you losing the stage. So in this case, that's 20. And on this stage, there are 11 enemies. This means that you do not need to deploy a single operator. They're all essentially irrelevant. You can, of course, anyway, if you feel so inclined. And I will, just for the sake of it. But, you know, you don't need to. But yes, so there's all sorts of different operators in this game. They have different roles, do different things. Yeah, we'll get more into it in a, in a bit, I imagine. But uh, again, for this stage is basically irrelevant. You, you know, nothing you do really matters all that much because it is literally impossible to lose. And so, I'm going to take the opportunity to take a quick sip. Sit. And I will talk a little bit about some of the choices I've made. Yeah. So, the choices I've made are not a whole lot. Basically, I just sort of chose various operators who I thought were somewhat interesting. Your playable characters are called operators also. I don't think I mentioned that specifically before. But yes, I chose operators that I thought were interesting and eh, chose operators that I thought were interesting and who were uh, level one. I specifically went out of my way to choose level one operators, except for Amya here. Who is the only member of my team who's level 50. I chose her because I can't not have Amya, you know, if I'm going to be sticking with the, the story of this game. Yeah, so one thing you might notice is that some of the characters in this game speak English and some of them do not. This isn't necessarily an in-universe thing, this is just due to the fact that certain characters have English voices implemented and some of them don't. Yeah, I was sort of debating one way or the other, because I do like a fair amount of the English dubs uh, quite a bit. I do like quite a few of the English dubs quite a bit, but there's, you know, I feel like it would be a little bit, a little bit jarring, maybe. <laughs> a little bit jarring, maybe, to have, you know, some characters be speaking English and some characters not be speaking English with no particular, you know, no particular rhyme or reason to it. But right now, I have it, you know, set with most of the characters that can speak English, are speaking English. I think pretty much all of them are. I have them set to do so. And all the rest are just on the default Japanese. So if anyone, you know, would prefer that I have the, have the, all the operators speaking all one language, let me know. But yes. So going to do a tutorial, like I said. I didn't, I guess I might have checked, or maybe I should have checked beforehand to see what tutorials are and are not uh, relevant to plot or characterization, but oh well. <clears throat> a few days ago, Rhodes Island Combat Training Ground. Instructed Doberman, I'm sorry. Operator Jessica, according to the schedule, you're three minutes and 14 seconds late. I'm, I'm so sorry. It took me some time to get ready my equipment. What do I need to do next? Operator Jessica, your new mission objective is to perform a combat drill simulating Dr. Tiber's behaviors. Huh? Me? The operation to rescue the doctor will be carried out in a few days. Now, we need a simulation based on something representative of the actual situation. I will show you some more advanced combat techniques. Those who participate in the operation will also be more familiar with these techniques, so they can assist better. I see. Jessica, deploy Yato and Rangers to engage the enemy. So yes, so now we're seeing some different different types of operators. Yato here is a vanguard. Get ready for battle. She's not a whole. She's not too similar to most vanguards, to be totally honest with you. All right. But uh, she is a vanguard. Rangers here is a sniper. 
Snipers are ranged units, as you may have guessed. And one interesting thing about ranged units is that they are deployed on ranged tiles, these elevated tiles. Enemies typically cannot walk on ranged tiles in any capacity. Yeah, there are some exceptions, enemies that can pass over ranged tiles, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of the enemies that you'll find, especially in these early stages, can't pass over them and can't uh, interact with, with uh, your units that are placed on them. So yeah, so your ranged units are generally pretty safe. Your melee units are the ones who will be physically blocking enemies and will be taking damage more or less. You must have noticed that our operators will lose HP when they are continually engaged on the back in combat. Without proper backup, they may fall on the battlefield. But don't worry. A medic operator, Hibiscus, is already on standby. She can heal the HP of ally operators. Please deploy Hibiscus immediately to help our operators on the front line. And so yes, you'll also notice that operators have ranges that are that are yeah, that you can see when you're deploying them. You can face them in any of these four directions. There we go. There we go indeed. So yes. So again, most operators can only be placed on either melee tiles or range tiles. Hello all. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well tonight. Yeah, so most operators can only be deployed either on specifically on me on melee tiles or specifically on range tiles. Uh, the uh, the first operator that I deployed in the previous mission what actually satisfying battle. is one who can be deployed on ranged or melee tiles. Weedy, you'll see some more of her later. Yes, she can be deployed on ranged or melee tiles, but that is a little bit of a special case. Yeah, certain certain operators that fall into certain archetype we call it uh, are yeah certain operators that fall into certain archetypes can do that uh, some of them cannot sit so yes let us continue with more story actually is there no yeah all the story for that mission was uh, contained within that mission. <laughs> this is way beyond my expectations. Explosions, rioting, fires, fighting in the streets. Has Chernobyl completely fallen into chaos? Thanks to the swift response and teamwork of the Chernobyl military police. The situation is largely under control. The incidents in most areas have already been contained. Hmm. I'm not so sure about that, but uh, the, the 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 incidents in our area most certainly have not. Currently, the military police has already surrounded the thugs who had taken Ashuk Ospek. As you can see, the senseless violence is about to be put to an end. Please do not panic. Stay indoors and await another victory for Chernobog. May the glory of Ursus bless the Emperor and his people. Yeah, this guy doesn't seem particularly contained. Curse them. Where did they get that kind of those kind of equipments and weapons? Don't get scared. Cowards in armor are still just cowards. They're just a bunch of untrained thugs. But there are so many of them. We've already taken out forces three times the size of ours. Just do it again and the battle will be over. Enough with the nonsense, Chernobog scum. You filth think you can stand up against us? Exile and hard labor are too good for your kind. You should have executed the lot of you the moment you were captured. How dare you? Uh, they're rushing us again. Our front lines won't hold out much longer. Or the Emperor, stand your ground. I can't do it anymore. Anyone who turns tail will be executed on the spot. We have to stay put. We must not expose ourselves yet. The Ursus guards are getting overwhelmed by reunion? Hmm. Their broadcast on television can't be farther from the truth. Even in this situation, the Chernobog authorities are still playing their games. But things are getting worse for us too. We can't expect to sneak out anymore. Terrible road conditions and enemy blockades. We won't be able to use our own vehicles anymore. That's right. 
The rescue team must be large enough to clear out any reunion members that block our way. Splitting up any further would be suicide. Those Ursus guards might look powerful because they're well equipped, but reunion... Reunion clearly has an overwhelming advantage in numbers and morale. This is nothing like when we first investigated Chernobog. When we sneaked in, the quantity, distribution, and status of Chernobog's guards and military were in a very bizarre state. Back then, we just couldn't figure out why. The Reunion already destroyed most of Chernobog's defenses at that point? Though I don't have any proof of it, if Reunion has grown powerful enough to launch such a large-scale operation, all I can say is I feel lucky that those guards are being surrounded instead of us. Of course, we must be vigilant of our surroundings. By the time we end up in a crisis, it'll already be too late. Doctor, hurry and gather your teams. Our scouts have discovered Reunion forces. They're about to come in contact with our rescue team. For now, being cautious is the only advantage we can get. Hmm? Why is there an armed force here? All teams, prepare for combat. Don't give them any chance to retaliate. Alright. So, time for another mission. And see us. So before we get started, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the different types of operators that we have here. So, Amia here is a caster. You can recognize that by the icon in the top left. You'll recognize all of the different types of operators by the icons in the top left, of course. I say, of course, as though as though you know this, but perhaps you don't. So I should be a little bit more careful with my wording. That's it. So yes. So casters deal magic damage, basically. The game refers to it as arts damage, but you can think of it as magic damage if that is more sort of what you are familiar with. But yes. So there are basically two damage types in this game. There is arch damage and then there is physical damage. There's also true damage, which uh, bypasses defenses, but you know, the minutia is a little bit beyond this basic uh, introduction, I think. So yes, so all you need to know for right now is that there is arch damage and that there is a stat that governs your resistance to arts, and then there is physical damage, and there, there is a stat that, that determines your defense against physical damage. And the stat that determines your resistance against against arts is called resistance, and the stat that determines your, your defense against physical attacks is called defense. I didn't initially mean to say the names of those stats in the descriptions of those stats, but then I realized that I was doing it halfway through, and so I just had to stick with it. Yes, there's only one attacking stat. Just every unit has an attack. Even units that do not deal damage have an attack, such as medics, such as Hibiscus here. We won't be using for right now because she's pretty high level as far as my units go. Yes, so attack is basically just your general power stat. Most of the things that your units can do scale off of their attack. Or, you know, most of the things that they do that produce numbers of some variety, either numbers of damage done to an enemy or numbers of health restored to an ally are based on their attack. So anything that increases the attack of your operators is generally good. Anything that decreases their attack is generally bad, even if they're not attacking. And the same goes for your enemies. They all have the same stats, basically. Yes, you, you will also have HP and all that. <coughs> Yeah, one, one thing that is worth noting. Oops. Yeah, one thing that is worth noting about stats is that your defense is subtracted, is uh, directly subtracted from the damage that physical attacks deal, whereas your resistance is subtracted as a percentage. So, yeah, so Amia here has 10 resistance, so that means when she takes arch damage, she takes 10% less. And she has. 81 defense, so that means when she takes physical damage, she takes 81 less physical damage. And so one thing you one thing you will learn if you get into this game is that resistance is a lot harder to come by. Basically every unit has defense. In fact, I think I don't think that there are any units that don't have any defense whatsoever. But there are units that don't have resistance. And in fact, 
most units don't have resistance. Either they don't have very much, or they don't have any whatsoever. So let me just, uh, if I, there we go, sort my units by resistance. So you'll see, uh, Thermal X here is a little bit of an outlier, for reasons that we may get into at a later point. But, uh, yeah, Meyer here is, other than Thermal X, who again is an outlier, uh, Meyer here is my unit who has the highest resistance at 23. And if you'll, yeah, if you'll see, if you'll notice, let me get to, yeah, okay. So here is where we start seeing units that do not have resistance. And you'll see a lot, a lot, a lot of units do not have resistance. I suppose I didn't give you all that great of a chance to see what units do have resistance or how many of them do. So you'll just have to take me at my word that at least of the ones that I have, there are far more that have, uh, that do not have resistance than that do. So yes, so again, resistance is something of a rare stat. It's mostly found on units that deal art damage or arts damage and on more defensively inclined units, but it is not unheard of on any particular type of unit. And so yes, so now we'll go into the different uh, types of operators. So there's, I guess, I don't remember what the official term is, but I want to say class. That seems simple enough, so we'll, we'll refer to it as a class for right now. So there are vanguards. Vanguards are operators that you typically want to deploy at the start of a battle because they generate resources for you, specifically if they generate a resource, the re the only resource that matters, really. Or at least the only resource that you have that is not, uh, that is independent of specific operators. Uh, they deploy, uh, deploy deployment points. You need to spend a certain amount of deployment points to put a unit on the field, just like in any most, uh, most tower defense games. But yes, you need to put down you need to spend a certain number of deployment points to put down a unit. And most vanguards, not all, but most vanguards <coughs> have some ability to generate deployment points. Yes, how they do so will vary quite widely across them. Some uh, generate deployment points upon defeating enemies. Some de generate deployment points upon using their abilities. Yeah, things like that. Cantabile here is another something of an exception, but yeah, I do certainly have a whole lot of exceptions in my team for this being something of a, or this in being intended to be something of a basic team, but oh well, we might just learn about that more together. So yes, so next are guard operators. So guard operators are typically sort of a step up from vanguards in terms of damage and in terms of defense. But yeah, they are sort of your melee damage dealing classes typically. Yeah, and again, what, how much damage that they do, what type of damage that they do, how they deal their damage, and to whom uh, varies quite widely among them. But again, it is sort of your physical DPS class, if you want to think of it that way. And so, Moving on from physical DPS, we have, is, eh, we will have, we have, eh. <laughs> let's take that again. We have defenders who are your tank class. Yes. So most defenders have a higher ability to block enemies than other, than other uh, classes. Yes. This means that enemies cannot simply walk past them as easily as they can other, other classes. Most characters are able to block at least one unit unless they are a ranged unit, because again, uh, enemies do not walk on ranged tiles, and so they do not need to be those that, uh, most of them, most ranged units don't need to block anything, don't need to block anything ever, and they aren't able to do so even if they, even if they wanted to, because yes, the enemies that can go over ranged tiles cannot be blocked. But yes, so anyway. Yeah. Your defenders 
can block more units than generally other classes can. Yeah, Gummy here can block three. Just to bring another example, uh, Lapland can block two, which is pretty typical for guards. And Vanilla can also block two. Vanguards often can block two. Some of them can only block one. Depends a little bit just on what the what the particular Vanguard is built for. But yes. So now we get into your ranged classes. Yeah, snipers deploy on range tiles. I think I think exclusively. There are always a few exceptions here and there in cer in certain classes, but uh, I think I don't know. For right now, I think it is it is fair to say that snipers are a ranged class. They deploy on ranged tiles and all that. So yes, so snipers deal pretty good damage. They deal physical damage, generally speaking. Yeah, pretty good physical damage. They are able to uh, deal with enemies from further away. So typically you want to place them sort of like, you know, right next to, uh, or at least I do. I guess I don't know if this is necessarily optimal, but typically I place a sniper, you know, at a place where, where they can fire, from en fire at enemies from farther away and then continue firing them until the firing at them until they reach uh until they reach a point where they are blocked by a defender or other high block operator. Yes. So casters next are similar to uh, snipers. Typically they have shorter range, but they pretty much exclusively deal arch damage. Some of them can deal physical damage under certain circumstances, but again, for the most part, they mostly deal arch damage. And so, because of that, they are able to get past the defenses of enemies. Yeah, certain enemies do have resistance. Certain enemies do have resistance. And certain enemies have quite a bit of resistance, in fact. But by and large, a caster is a good way to get past enemies that have high defense. And snipers are typically better for enemies that have low defense. That's it. <clears throat> Yes. Next we have medics. Medics heal. Pretty straightforward. There are some that can deal some damage, but by and large, medics do not deal damage and instead are pretty much there specifically to support your team. They restore the health of your operators as we just recently established. Sometimes they can, you know, apply other effects as well. Some of them can, can buff, some of them can remove debuffs, all that sort of stuff. But you can think of medic as just sort of a general as a general support class. But yes. Next, we have supporters. If you can, if you can believe it, supporters are also something of a support class. Yes, they vary. They vary in function a little bit more than <clears throat> your medics. Maya here, again, using her in, as an example, is notable in that she has the ability to deploy units. She and other op other supporters in her general sort of a uh, her archetype, if you could call it that, that might be the actual term for it. Actually, maybe not. Ah, okay. They are these are all these are called classes. Branch. Okay, that's the word I'm looking for. So yes. So Meyer is a summoner, and she and other summoners have the ability to put down units, put down other units. Yes, yeah, so you can only deploy so many units at a time, generally speaking. Only, I think it's, the limit is like 10 or so. You can only deploy 10 units. Yeah, I might be wrong about that. It's been, it's been a while since I thought about that, actually. But yes, you can only deploy so many units. And uh, summoners, you know, don't get around that particular, get around that particular limitation. But they do, I guess... I don't need to go into that much detail about summoners. <laughs> I don't need to get into that much detail about summoners because there's... Yeah. I don't need to get into that much detail. I might get into it more so later. But not this stream, I don't think. There's more to be done and said. Yeah, I was thinking that we might get through the first... Uh, the zeroth chapter before, before the end of the stream, but uh, maybe not. Anyway, next we have specialists. Specialists are the specialist because they are the most wi wi eh, widely varied 
of all of the different archetypes. Uh, Thermal X here is a bomb. He explodes. Specialists like Cliffheart can uh, grapple enemies towards them. Specialists like F Eater can throw it, can throw enemies around, push them away. Specialists like Auk, weird. Specialists like Manticore uh, don't block enemies, but they have sort of an AOE around them in which they deal damage to all enemies in that area. Yeah, there's others. Uh, Project Red here, for instance, is a fast redeploy specialist. Yeah, there's a lot to be said. There's a lot to be said. They have uh, all sorts of different functions. So for right now, probably we would just focus on the ones that we have here. Again, maybe not the most basic of, uh, not the most basic setup we've got here, but we might as well just focus on the things that I can give you practical examples of. So yes, so this, if you'll notice, is also a mission that you can't fail. I was mistaken. I thought this was one that you could. But anyway, so let's deploy Cantabile. So yes, Cantabile is a vanguard. So like I said, she is focused a little bit on getting deployment points. She, however, is an agent, which is a special type of a van of vanguard. Yeah, I think she's the only agent. She's the only agent in the game at this point that I'm aware of, at least. So she has uh, some unique properties, basically. Yeah, if you'll notice before, she was generating deployment points upon defeating enemies. Now she's not, it? because her ability to de to generate deployment points is de is dependent on this skill. Whereas other vanguards, well, I guess. <laughs> Are we doing Scavenger this? isn't necessarily the best uh, example because she is also dependent on her skill to generate deployment points. But, uh, you know, typically for most characters, it is a repeatable action. Whereas in order to re-up re this skill, you have to uh, retreat uh, Cantabile, I believe. Yes, you have to retreat her and redeploy her. Yes, this is Pure Stream. She's a medic, I think. No, she is, a, she is a slightly different type of medic. I don't think I'll go into the, the details right now. But, uh, yeah, she is a medic. There is no turning back for you! Roberta? Ah, I forgot, I forgot that Roberta was a, uh, melee. Can you closer this way, okay? Thanks. I'll pay attention to how much force I use. These yes. real battlefields give me so much she inspiration. She is a supporter. Ever she's a bit different for most other supporters in that she's a melee unit, which I didn't even know. <laughs> didn't even know before now. But yes, her specific type of supporter allows, yeah, lets her summon these devices. I think these need to be, yeah, okay. I'm learning alongside all of you. I guess I probably should have, if I was to, you know, give you a description of things as they are happening, maybe I should have, you know, stuck to things that I knew, but oh well. Let's deploy me. Yes, Moose is a guard, which means that she is built to deal damage. The mission is over. Someday in the future, I'll have as clear a direction as you do. One hope. But yes. So where was I? I, don't know, I was going to say something about Moose there, but uh, we'll get back to it later, I suppose. I hope. <laughs> I might not remember. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Ugh. Those reunion goons sure are energetic. Who are you people? Why are you in Chernobog at a time like this? Uh, huh? What's going on? Are you spies? Our identities get revealed and the Ursus government starts to keep an eye on us. The consequences would be unfathomable. It comes down to it. Sir? A little girl? You're an infected? Stop right there. Put down your weapons. Be ready to back her up if they show any signs of hostility. Smoke? Where did it come from? Sir, surely you understand that we have a common enemy. Doberman. Defenders, they're attacking. What? 
Uh-oh. This person seems like they mean business. They have at least part of their face revealed. That means that they're a unique character, perhaps. Union, they're here. Amia, be careful. She's on a completely different level compared to those ordinary thugs. Hmm. Trying to run? Where do you think you're going? Go. Tear them apart. Even her minions seem like they're well trained. Could she be Reunion's ringleader? The haze is getting thicker and thicker. Are they planning to utilize it to launch a surprise attack? Sir, we have to evacuate immediately. If they manage to cut off our escape route, we'll all... Mm. Get lost, infected. Huh. I was tasked with defending this street. Rabbit, I don't care wh why you came here or what you plan to do. If you plan to ruin our city, know that someone will come after you. The rage of Ursus is never ending. If not, then what happens here is none of your business. I understand. Everybody in Ursus knows to never turn their back to the enemy. Now scram! We don't have time to deal with you. Hmm. Thank you. Doberman? Hurry, let's get to the first rendezvous point. All teams, move out. Quick. Hmm. Come at us, infected filth. Is that all you're capable of? Or are you just going to stand there staring at us? All Chanabogians must die. All right. Let's see. How much more do we have? Oh, yeah. We've got... We've got a fair amount more. <laughs> I kind of forgot how long this was. Granted, I've been taking somewhat of a, of a leisurely pace through things, but oh well. So yeah, so it looks like even our, even our, my plan to make this a little bit shorter than usual might, uh, things might end up a little bit longer than I was expecting I, anyway. Oh well. I think... Yeah, I think we will do one more tutorial stage and then we will wrap things up. I do have a little bit more to say before we go, so it won't be us immediately ending. But uh, but yes, so we'll do the second tutorial. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we will we will stick right. around long enough to do the second tutorial at least. Jessica, you've probably noticed that we need to designate a direction when deploying an operator. First, take a good look at how Rangers attacks the enemy. I suppose maybe I could have saved the talk about game mechanics for after I'd gotten past all the tutorials, because the tutorials themselves are going to talk about the game mechanics. I got a bit ahead of myself. But yes. So again, this is teaching you about spacing and facing and all of that. Yes, you'll notice Rangers is facing away from the slug, so he can't he can't deal with it. Did you see that, Jessica? Rangers cannot attack enemies behind him as they are outside his range. Tap Rangers to check his information. What are your orders? The orange area represents Rangers' attack range, which is determined by the direction assigned to him when deployed. Unless an operator has retreated or fallen, his direction and attack range cannot be changed as long as he is deployed. Make sure you take this into consideration before deploying an operator. At this stage, rangers cannot attack the originium slugs crossing behind him. But don't worry, we deploy other operators to defend the area. You have to go back to the battlefield. Deploy sniper op operator at Nakio, this location. Slip at his direction up by dragging upward. An operator will only be deployed to battle after you've specified the direction. Okay. I probably wouldn't have had him face upward. I probably would have had him face to the side, but oh well. Let the hunt begin. So yes, like I said, you know, different types of operators have different purposes. Personally, when I deploy, I like to, or when I build my teams, unless I specifically have a reason to do otherwise, 
I will typically use uh, two vanguards, two defenders, two medics, and the rest of it, it can vary a little bit depending on what strategy I'm, I'm looking for. <laughs> but that is a pretty, pretty basic, pretty basic, uh, we have Pretty the basic doctor's team orders composition. to thank for this. We actually have Jessica's orders to thank for that. If you were being lore compliant. But I guess Jessica is trying to simulate the doctor's orders, so it could go either way. So yeah, I guess while I'm here talking about uh, team composition, well, I might as well show you the team composition. So yeah, so like I said, we've got two vanguards. Two defenders, two medics. Probably you could get away with one vanguard. Yeah, unless it's a mission where enemies spawn very quickly. Because one thing about vanguards is that they typically also cost very few deployment points. Or, you know, relatively few deployment points. So you can get them out at the start of the battle. Then retreat them, deploy more powerful units. Because vanguards tend to be a little bit on the weaker side as well. But yes. So, let's see, where was I? Where indeed was I? Okay, yeah. So like I said, things can vary up a little bit beyond that. Yeah. And again, you don't necessarily need to follow my advice or my, uh, or my, um, example. I'm just saying what usually works for me and what I typically enjoy playing with. But yeah. So as you can see, other than other than what I already stated, the rest of the team is pretty varied. I went out of my way to choose a, a fairly varied uh, squad as much as I could. Yeah, you'll see that no two, no two, uh, well, I guess you can't see it from here, but no two of these operators are belong to the same branch, except for, I think actually Matterhorn and Spot do. But that's mostly because I didn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of defenders that are level one. That I could have used for this. But yeah. So, I think that about covers the gameplay. Hmm. So I do kind of wish, I do kind of wish, I kind of want the music to, to stick around, but I can't do that while also, or, hold on, can, I should be able to actually, hold on. I think, no, wait, that wouldn't. Hmm. Hold on. Because, yeah, I want to... Hmm. Once again, not quite as prepared as I might like to be. But, oh well. Actually, I guess I don't need to be. Because I can do... Well, no, wait, hold on. Or actually, because yeah, I can do that. Oh, nope, that didn't do anything, actually. <laughs> hmm. Hmm, yeah, okay. I need to figure out a way to make the game go away without getting rid of the audio. Okay, nope, that didn't do it. Well, I guess we don't need the game audio. I guess if we're not going to have the game audio, we might as well... Well, no. No, no, no. Because I do want a visual aid for what I'm going to be talking about. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Hmm. Well, yes. Okay, I do want a visual aid, but I don't need to do anything fancy with this. I can just be... do it simply. So, let's see... So yeah, so one thing that I sort of wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about different uh, operators throughout this series. And uh, I was thinking that I'd have to choose very wisely because I didn't think that I'd be, you know, I thought that I'd be getting through these chapters fairly quickly. I thought that I would be at the end of chapter zero uh, by the end of this stream, to be honest. But uh, it seems like that's not going to happen. I probably could have if I had skipped through all of the dialogue and all that. Or, you know, skipped through the missions that I'd already completed, but what's the fun in that? So, the first Ar Arknight's character that I want to talk about. Oh, 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 that's not it. The first Arknight's character that I want to talk about 
Mm. Hold on. I should wait and say this when I actually have the <laughs> the image up that I have that I want to show for the sake of uh for the sake of timing. Nope, that's not it. Thank you for my pa for your patience while I uh <laughs> while I get everything set up here. All right, save image. All right, so there we are. The first Arknights character that I want to talk about is you, and also me. <laughs> yes, this is the Doctor. This is the character that we're playing as, or at least, you know, their general representation. I can put this... I should be able to put this into the, the game place so that it'll fit neatly. Right, I made it go away. Uh... Oh, nope. Go beyond game. Where are you? There we are. But yes, so, this is the Doctor. Yes, they are, as you can see, in a position of authority in Rhodes Island, and they were even more so before. Yes, what precisely has happened to the Doctor to leave them in their current predicament is unknown to us at this point. But yes, it is, I think, I think it might not have been fully revealed uh, in general. So I'm not just speaking, you know, speaking in sort of in character there when I say that we don't know what happened yet. But as you can see, it certainly was not expected. Amya was not expecting the Doctor to not recognize her when they woke up. Yeah, so you'll notice a lot of things about the Doctor. For one thing, that they uh, are completely covered up. Yeah, the game at no point refers to the Doctor with, a, with uh, gendered pronouns. Uh, they use the singular they to refer to the Doctor. But yes. Yeah, the Doctor, you know, as is pretty standard in a game like this, is a sort of audience insert character. Yeah, an audience insert character, they don't have, uh, you know, a lot of details of their of their identity set in stone. Don't have a lot of details of their identity set in stone, because they are meant to represent you, to a certain extent. Sip. But, they are not entirely you know, a non-character. They do have a character of their own. Yeah, some things that you, uh, I guess, I don't know, I don't know when we would get the chance to learn this, necessarily. I don't know when we'd get the chance to learn this in the, in, you know. Yeah, when we would get to see this in the story. But, uh, yeah, just to share a few, a few little lore tidbits about, Do about Dr. Arknights here as I like to refer to them. Yes, whoops. Zoom in a little bit on Dr. Arknights. I don't know why the scaling is so weird. I guess, hmm, I don't know why that happened at all, huh? I can do this though, there we go. I don't know why it wants to stay on that specific corner either. There we are. Dr. Arknights. But yeah, so an interesting thing about Dr. Arknights, if you'll notice, they have a, a sort of hood on and a little a little thing under that. Uh, that is a mask, apparently. And according to some dialogue from one of the events, uh, Heart of Surging Flame, which I think it was definitely the, f it was the first event that I saw, I think. Or no. Was it? I want to say Heart of Surging Flame was the first event, but I... I don't know if it was that or another event. I'd say names here, but that would probably just confuse anyone here who is not already familiar with the order in which uh, events were added to Arknights. <laughs> but yes. So anyway, in the order isn't isn't relevant in this in the in this discussion, so I won't bring it up again. So, <laughs> uh, Doctor Arknights. Yeah. The. Uh, the mask that Dr. Arknights has is described in, uh, that's a weird way to phrase it. Uh, Amya describes the doctor, uh, during one of the events, during, 
part of Surging Flame as having a, having a funny expression on their mask at one point. So we can infer that the Doctor wears the mask, you know, in general, like in-universe. It's not just there specifically to make them less, you know, easier to project upon due to lacking uh, significant identifying features. Yeah, it is an actual thing that they wear most of the time. This is something that we can infer from this. And we can also infer from this that it has some sort of display on it that uh, allows them to, to emote to a certain extent. I promise I did not uh, base my own mask upon that idea. But yes, anyway. So yes, so that's an, a neat, neat little design tidbit about the Doctor. An interesting little bit about their personality is the fact that they are pretty wild. <laughs> There's a lot of weird things about them. So they, they are, again, something of a audience insert character. A self-insert character, but they they have more to them than just that. Because uh, one, a few notable things about the Doctor, some of the most notable things about the Doctor, are their strange eating habits. <laughs> because the Doctor Arknights, uh, among other things, uh, they their preferred method of cooking instant noodles uh, is, or perhaps at least was, to place the raw noodles in their mouth and to pour boiling water into their mouth to cook them. Or at least this was a thing that they were known to do. Maybe not their preferred method, but it was a method that they were known to employ with some regularity, enough so that it is a, a thing that people remember about them, or at least a thing that a specific person remembers about them. And we'll get into that person, we will discuss that person more when she shows up. But yes. So, among other things, the doctor doctor is also known for having or eating a wide variety of things that other people perhaps would not find so palatable, such as uh, slugs. Yes, you you saw some of those that we were fighting. Those very large, sort of yellow and I think I don't know. I don't think we saw any orange ones, but the large yellow and black, sort of segmented looking, spiky creatures. Uh, doctor Arknight is known to eat those among and other other sorts of wildlife enough so that one of the an operator in another an operator named vanilla in another event um i want to say it was stories of afternoon but i don't but that's not relevant here either but uh is expresses some concern expresses some concern uh when she is leaving on a mission at one point because she happens to have uh, a number of pet uh slugs Originium slugs is what they are properly called. But yeah, she happens to have a number of pet Originium slugs, and she expresses a apparently fa well-founded concern that the doctor might eat them if if uh, the doctor were to find them unattended. So uh, she puts their care in the hands of another operator, who we may or may not talk about later at some point. So yeah, there's a lot to be a lot to be a lot to be said about the doctor. There's a lot to be said about the Doctor. They have a lot more, a lot more personality to them than they than you might expect. But yeah, and they certainly have a lot more, a lot more to them in general than we will get than we have seen already. You know, we have seen that they have a past, they have a past that other people remember that they do not. That past is certainly very, very uh, important to them, to Rhodes Island to a lot of a lot of different characters that we will meet. But uh but yeah, can't go into that in too much detail, in part because I don't know a lot of the details, and in part because I want to spare you them. But yes, so that leads us with uh or that leaves us. Yeah, yeah. This is we're done. Done. <laughs> Oops. Not that done. Oop. Ah. Switch. I forgot that I had this open. <laughs> All right, hold on. Browser. I'm already looking for my for potential raids. Where did I where did I put this? There we go. <laughs> I forgot where I put that window. Anyway, so raids. If anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them as always. In the meantime, I will talk business and then wrap up and all that. Take a sip, as always. 
sin. But yes, so let's see. So today has been Arc Nights. It's been fun. Yeah, I definitely, definitely enjoyed, uh, definitely enjoyed doing it. I will enjoy it more when we get more into it, I imagine. When I get to stretch my strategic muscles and also my voice acting muscles. But yeah, I like to do character voices. I, I definitely wasn't as consistent with the character voices as I might have liked to have been this time around, but oh well. But yes, so let's see. What is it? What else is there to say? Schedule, right. <laughs> Completely slipped my mind. So, tonight has been Arc Nights. Tomorrow, we should be seeing some more Tales of Arise. Thursday, we definitely won't be seeing more uh, Valhalla. VA11 uh, VA Hall A, Cyberpunk Bartender Action with Sheppy Sheps. And we'll see if it's possible to get that rescheduled to another day. But uh, one way or another, it won't be on Thursday. And if it gets rescheduled, that might replace a different game. We will see. Yeah, one way or another, I will try to find something to do on Thursday. I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't be short of things to do. There's a lot of games out there. But, uh... Yeah, so I'll look for something to do on Thursday in place of Tail... or in place of Valhalla. Yeah, in place of the usual collab. And then on Friday, we should be expecting some more Tales of Arise. But yes. So, all streams start typically around 8.30 p.m. Central Time, as when they are scheduled for. Usually ends up a little bit later than that, due to various circumstances. <laughs> various circumstances is a way to phrase it. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm not seeing any raid suggestions tonight. So... <laughs> I suppose that leaves it up to me. Uh, let's go and visit. Let's go and visit Cole. Cole M the Golem. So yes. So raid slash raid. Yeah, I already went over the schedule, all that, all the business. So I think, yeah. Basically, all we need to do now is get the raid set up and then uh, do it, basically. <clears throat> so, yes. So, um, once again, I don't know. I don't, I guess there's nothing else to be, to be gone over again, to be re reiterated on. So, that is that. Cole, Golem, Cole M the Golem, Cole Golem VTuber, good friend uh, of the stream, been, uh, been around for, yeah. Been, been acquainted with them for, for a good while, done some collabs with them in the past. But yeah, playing some Final Fantasy XIV right now. And so, let's see. Ah, yes, of course. The raid message, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. And so that should leave us with everything that needs to be said tonight. So, yeah, that should be it. So... <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you'll continue or that you have had a fine night. I hope that you'll continue to have a fine night every night, and I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>